How are you doing? I'm so very well. How about you? I'm just trying to Good. straighten my... There. Awesome. Well, it's been... It's been Phoenix a... crooked. There we go. Yeah, we haven't seen each other in a couple of weeks. I you know. I, was, uh, I don't know if you saw my little teaser on my Instagram stories, but uh, we've done over 60 interviews together. That's 1,800 minutes over the last 18 months. That's you start talking about us spending a lot of time together. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> 30 hours of interviewing. Wow. That's a lot. I know, since last April. But because we didn't talk last week, I got a lot of questions. All Go right. for it. We're, okay. That was you that moved us last week, by the way. Even though I was in budget, I was okay. Oh, good. Ex I'll give you the excuse. Uh, my son got sick, and I had to get oh, him well, tested. Okay. So, sorry, I apologize. Good excuse. Good excuse. <laughs> we, started like, the we started budget, right? That's where we were. No, oh, okay, yes. Yeah, I got a... Yeah, so he's he's fine. He's okay. Yeah. He's negative, uh, but he was what away. What happened? Is allergies or a cold, cold. or... Oh. As soon as you have the sniffles, you have to go home. <laughs> I so. had I, I had allergies, and it it also people were considering yeah. every time you sneeze, it's like I don't yeah. have COVID promise. I'm double vaxxed. <laughs> it's ten times. I worse feel fine it. otherwise, right? <laughs> yeah. So well, I'm glad to hear he's well. Say hello. For yeah, me. he's good. So sorry about that last week. No um, uh, so let's start with the questions. These are all questions from people, writers, uh, journalists. So. I'll get to it here. Uh, what are your thoughts on restaurants being left behind and the reopening plan? Yeah. Uh, so it, it, it's not how I would have done it. I would have liked uniform rules across the board for reopenings. I would have liked a staggered approach uniformly applied backed by science and data, which is what we said we would do. So I know there are a lot of restaurants. It's set over 7,000 just in Mississauga. So when you look at across the GTHA and across the province, there are many, many. So I think the argument is the thousands and thousands of restaurants and the people it would affect. But unfair that large sporting venues, yeah. and, you know, as, as well intended as they are, and I know they're well intended to monitor that everyone wears their masks. I know not everyone does. I've seen the photos as you have. So, and I know that our restaurants try their best to be safe environments. They don't want to be closed down again. It's their livelihood. So I think, you know, we're at 50% capacity. That should be across the board. And then we should uniformly move to 60 or 70, whatever it might be, and then 80 and then 100. Um, I think there needs to be some time in between each phase. Um, and, and I think it should have applied uniformly to all venues. I don't like the fact that our you know, small retailers, our restaurants, our gyms have been left behind. Yeah. And I know there's a strategy being developed for them. And I was told, please hold, um, that there is a strategy which will be announced. So I'm very hopeful it will be announced this week. And you, part of me thinks, well, maybe it had a little bit to do with the home opener. I don't know. Yeah, well, I think it did. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so MLSC is a powerful and I understand, and I understand that, and and that's great, and and I'm sure many people went and enjoyed it, and and God bless them, uh, okay. but not fair to our local businesses and our local restaurants in particular, and you know, gyms. You and I both support the gyms, yeah. and right, and small business, small retailers as well, and the malls, right? True. So um, I, I know this has nothing to do with you, but I, I always go into restaurants and stuff like that. And I ask them how they're doing. Any, any, um, you know, any issues you come up with the uh, vaccine passport? And I didn't know this, but, you know, with a vaccine passport, you actually still have to show their, your ID, right? Yeah, you, you do. Mm -hmm. So and then and they're like, and the owners that I talk to, they're like, that actually takes more time <laughs> than it does the paper and the ID. And I was like, well, that doesn't make much sense. Anyway, I mean, I've been doing the same thing. And don't forget over the weekend, um, not everybody had downloaded their, you know, app, the app and the QR code yet I had, but not everybody has. And so this weekend, they weren't asking. And remember, it was Monday before everybody could go back. So if you didn't do it on the day you were supposed to, you could go back Monday and do it. So more and more people will be asked, but you can still also present the paper copy as we did. I have a copy on my phone. And now I have the QR code on my phone. But m my approach was a little different. I said, you know, have you been checking? And of course, they tell me yes. <laughs> and then is it more cumbersome? And they said, no, it's for the for the host or hostesses that I've been speaking to at uh, 
at the restaurants. They say, no, it's part of our responsibilities. We understand that. Um, it takes a little longer if people aren't prepared. So we'd like to tell people, please get prepared, have it handy, have your VAX certificate, uh, proof of vaccine available uh, before you come to the counter to check in. That'll make things go a little easier and then have your proof of ID because they have to prove not where you live, but that it's you. So a photograph sure. ID, right? Because there's no identification on your VAC certificates. So, I mean, I could give you my phone, you could be Bonnie Crombie, but you couldn't be because not if you showed the photo, right? Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, how, have you heard any um, kind of restaurants not abiding? And have you heard about customers being kind of uh, being sent by law officers? <laughs> yes, once. Uh, and it was, you know, our, our objective is always educate and inform before we uh, enforce. So yeah. there was an, an education session with one restaurant, which I won't tell you who it is because they just was a lapse. And, you know, I think they just forgot themselves that day. And uh, now the rules are in place. And everyone knows, I mean, how many establishments were you going into where you were getting your temperature check when you were walking in? It takes no more time than that. Sure. Um, here's another question. I have a little issue with because the, I can see that because you are, vertical and usually they're horizontal <laughs> my ipad is slipping down oh, you can switch it back if you want because we'll, we'll just edit it so you're square so. no if you don't mind every once in a while i'll just kind of push it okay, no, okay. it's okay. slipping <laughs> as long as it doesn't fall so um the uh, 5 to 11 year old vaccines from pfizer are mm -hmm. going to be approved very soon and uh i think it was uh, dr bogosh said that it probably will be approved by christmas yeah, uh, I think that was the plan that uh, parents yeah. could get their children vaccinated over the Christmas holidays, the, the break, the two week break over the holidays. Okay, and then uh, so that that's the plan in Peel, is that correct? Or, or I, uh, it, it is not the plan in Peel hasn't been discussed yet, I'll be honest, because they haven't been given approval yet. Of course, we're just in the approval phase. But okay. I know I've heard Dr. Bogosh speculate that should it be approved, before Christmas, parents could use the holidays to have their children vaccinated, yes. Okay, and then it's not are a we- not policy yet because we're, they're not approved yet, right? They've just made the yeah. application for approval for five, five to 17, five yeah. to 12, five to 12. Uh, yeah, five to 11. Uh, I guess uh, there must be a plan in place in Peel. Uh, you guys are getting ready for that, correct? Yes, we have some preliminary discussions on whether we would you know, open another mass vac center or whether we would just continue continue with the program we have now with the vax fan and the availability at, at doctor's offices, pharmacies, et cetera, and availabilities at high schools. So would we reopen up rec centers again? Okay. Know, this is something we have to, we have to put our minds to. So let, let's be clear though, this isn't a vaccine that has yet been approved. They've just yep. gone in for approval, right? To um, Health Canada. So, I mean, we'll get prepared because of the likelihood that it could be approved. So, right. and if it is before Christmas, then yeah, we have to make those arrangements. So would we open up school gymnasiums, rec centers again, or will it be a more casual setting? Boy, oh boy, I have to figure this out. I have a new stand. I have a new stand, sorry. Um, it sounds like you guys- it's, Sometimes it's like slipping down mm -hmm. as I'm speaking to you. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you're gonna have a busy Christmas break <laughs> if that's the case. Um, so uh, can we see the Vax vans going to schools and stuff like that? Is that one of the... Well, sure. So they go to malls and cultural centers and religious institutions now. Um, and there are quite a number of schools. I didn't pull them up, but it was Ascension and Applewood and um, Mount Carmel, Carmel that um, were hosting Vax clinics and continue to do so. But we closed yeah. the mass Vax clinics, right? At Paramount okay. Fine Foods, at UTM, et cetera. The only one that is open remains... Um, at the uh, uh, Peel, Peel Region buildings. Okay, um, and if you can believe it, Mississauga, it says here, uh, is forecasting that it's gonna be under 1 million population, 995,000 to be exact, by 2051. Uh, with the current rate of growth, it seems like it's gonna grow faster. Uh, do you see uh, Mississauga hitting 1 million before 2051? 
I do. You know, they tell us our population isn't 800,000 today. And I feel it, it is because I think there are a lot of people who are not accounted for, whether they're in secondary units or they're newcomers or didn't respond to the census. They tell us they're 775. And I always say we're 800,000. And I know we're going to get because of all the new developments as well. Right. We've got not only 15,000 people coming in and Lakeview, another at least 5,000 coming in at Brightwater. We have 25 towers in the next five years um, in the downtown core. Uh, and then we have another 35 towers in the next 30 years in the downtown core. I'm slipping again. And then, of course, there's uh, what I like to call Uptown, which is uh, here, Ontario and Eglinton being redeveloped on all four corners, the ninth line lands and all the redevelopment occurring along the here, Ontario corridor as a result of the LRT. I think our numbers are, are, are going to grow faster. We'll get to one million before 50 is 2050. So, so when do you think we'll get to one million? Then? It are you, sounds are you like... asking me to speculate? Oh, yeah. so twenty forty, <laughs> ten years sooner. Do, right. You can make that a headline. Crombie says, "Miss, I'm going to hit a million by twenty forty. I hope. I, I, I don't I'd love think... to be the mayor. I'd love to be the mayor of a city of a million people, but I may not be around by twenty forty. <laughs> yeah, you will. <laughs> so. uh, so, and that, I don't think that headline would, would scare many people. They'd probably be like, yeah, I thought there was a million now. I was so. just going to say, a lot of people think we're, you know, world-class city with a million now. We are a world-class city. Our population isn't quite there yet, but I think we'll be. True. Uh, a lot of development going down in Mississauga South. Uh, Lakeview, uh, there's... Mm. The Brightwater? Yeah, Brightwater. Both, well, those are two. Yeah, we did the groundbreaking for, uh, for Brightwater, I think it was last week. Last yep. week or the week before it was wonderful. They, you know, these developments, boy, oh boy, they're just yep. going to re revitalize our waterfront. Imagine this is reclaimed land that was brownfield. One was an oil refinery, right? It was the Imperial Oil site, Texaco site, depending on how old you are. This is definitely flipping again. Um, and the <laughs> other one, of course, was the power plant. Just, just tell me what, uh, what um, frame you need. I'll, I'll uh, Amazon it to you. Um, so. Really? Yeah. So it's it's yeah. a stand it's a stand for my iPad is what we're doing and, and it's it, it's doing this but because we're um, vertical not horizontal it keeps <laughs> expect a package okay uh, so uh, so my question was <laughs> Lakeview yes. Brightwater and yes. possibly the Port Credit Marina it's going to bring right. a lot of a lot of people into Mississauga South mm -hmm. have you talked you know, have you thought about the congestion, what you're going to do to get people out? Yes, day and night. That's what keeps me up at night. <laughs> the one thing I think about with all that development is how we're moving people. And of course, we have a BRT planned on Lakeshore and that's been approved. So that's okay. great news from East Avenue. Um, and also... For people that well, don't know, what's BRT? Bu bus Rapid Transit, okay. a dedicated a dedicated fast track bus going into the go line and we're meeting up with the Mimico station as well. There's the go at, at Port Credit and the other one at Mimico. Um, the both development groups have pledged shuttles into the, okay. uh, into the go lines as well. Um, and you, you, you mentioned the, um, Port, uh, Port Street, uh, which is a marina right now, the Port Street development. Um, and we're really excited about that to have a public marina and we're waiting for the provincial government to approve that funding. So if we, all we need is a little bit of support because I know the communities behind it. I went to Chicago, they have 19 public marinas. Mississauga should have one. We should have one. And we're the most natural deep water harbor in this side of Lake Ontario. So it should be here. We're gonna put that port back in the port credit. And when you think about not only recreation, the commercial fishing that's there, I had the opportunity to go out on a salmon fishing boat and they sponsor a big derby. Um, and that was really exciting. I didn't realize there was so much commercial activity on the water, but there absolutely is. And it was very exciting. And then there was the one day I went out and did the uh, kayaking and paddle boarding right in the marina. It was fun. Right mm -hmm. at the harbor near Snug Harbor there. There's a so, lot of activity. Uh is there is there any other um, kind of uh, construction or development projects in regards to getting people out of that area outside of the BRT? Uh, not currently, but once the Lakeshore line is electrified, which is on, is on track, uh, okay. there will be the opportunity for many more stops along that line as well. So, you know, we're all, always the challenge is first mile, last mile, Khaled, right? How to get people to public transit and how to get them back home. 
Okay. So the, that is the main challenge. But you know, you're quite right with with, with respect to the congestion, uh, and and even more now so because the restaurants have been using uh, the lay-by lanes and the parking lanes and the second lanes for patio. But we all love that, uh, and it really reinvigorates, revitalizes uh, Port Credit as well with the number of patios we have open and will continue to have open. So we, you know, those lanes may or may not come back. Okay. Oh, really? Okay. I'm sure. I'm sure those restaurateurs would like to keep those patio spaces, right? Cool. Uh, last week you met with uh, Justin Trudeau, the Prime I Minister. Did <laughs> last week was a week of um, uh, big city mayor meetings. So yep. the Canadian big city mayors met in Ottawa, and we did in-person meetings. Although a few of them, a few of them weren't able to attend in person. Uh, it was an opportunity to uh, toast and roast my, uh, the outgoing mayors uh, who were departing. Uh, I had the opportunity to roast and I had Nenshi from Calgary and some of the others okay. <laughs> roasted uh, Don Iveson of Edmonton. Great. And of course, those election results were uh, uh, reported this morning. I guess the election was yesterday uh, in Alberta and all the Quebec mayors didn't participate because of course they're in an election right now. Mm -hmm. So the Montreal mayor, line going there. Um, the other two female mayors in the country, whoa, are <laughs> Val Plante in Montreal and Sy Sylvie Perron in Langai. They, uh, Sylvie's outgoing. She's not running again, but certainly Val is. And uh, sorry about that. It's definitely. Yes, I'll definitely send you a link to what to buy. So, <laughs> so go ahead. Sorry. I cut you off. Uh, right. So they didn't participate, but of course we met with the Prime Minister and we met with Minister Dom LeBlanc. I think I'm just going to, if this isn't too close, I'll just hold it. No, um, that's good. Okay. Um, we met with uh, Minister Dominic LeBlanc as well. And uh, you know, we, uh, we talked a lot, a lot about our issues, of course. Climate change is a big one for all of us now. Uh, in addition to what we always raise, infrastructure funding, uh, transfer, <laughs> transit transportation, housing affordability, the issue of homelessness, the opioid crisis, and then of course I mentioned climate change. So we all talked about having plans for homelessness and the funding that we need from the federal government. And the prime minister talked about a, a, you know, a new federalism a new relationship with cities. And, uh, you know, we were really inspired by that because we need a seat at the table. Yeah. You know, uh, we talked about, and I talked about for sure, uh, how the cities can't build those large aspirational projects without the assistance of another level of government because we can't do it on the backs of the property taxpayer, right? You need a lot deeper pockets than that. And they have what do they call a fiscal firepower up there. Uh, and, you know, we need a show of that. So we need an opportunity to be at the table with them to talk about a new kind of federalism, frankly, new kind of relationship where they can fund us directly as well. Um, and then the following couple of days, we met with the... Um, Ontario big city mayors uh, in Burlington. Uh, Marianne Mead Ward hosted us in a beautiful new facility at something called the Pearl Hotel, which was beautiful on the waterfront. Geez, I hope Lakeview and Brightwater have a waterfront hotel planned. That was so beautiful. I'm gonna have to. You can make that, that happen. Actually. I know. I think we know people, right? <laughs> it was beautiful, and then we talked about um, municipal issues as well. And um, yeah. Did you did you yeah, talk to her? Uh, I'm the vice chair of that group. So should I be so lucky as to be reelected after the election, I would become the chair. Is this a good shoulder workout? I'm sorry. Um, no, this is okay. I didn't go to, I didn't have my workout this morning. I go tomorrow. Okay. I go, try to go every second day. Okay. I'm Excuse still me? going. Are you, are you still going? Yes, I'm, uh, I've, uh, I'm going to the gym now and I'm still jogging. So yeah. And, and, and I started hockey yesterday. Ice hockey for the first You're time. Okay. You're ahead of me. Yeah, so you're ahead of me. Ice hockey. I haven't been. I haven't run in a long time. Maybe well, the weather was a lot nicer. Let's put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh yeah, the, way, the weather's been awful the last two weeks. Sorry, but did you talk to Trudeau in regards to any specific Mississauga items yes. that, like the tunnel or uh, sorry, the loop? <laughs> sorry, did, yes. Patrick Brown wants is a tunnel. You want the loop? I want the loop. Um, so that is a provincial, provincially funded project. So more likely that funding would come from the provincial government. But of course, we have asked the federal government for it as well. Uh, yeah, I did have questions on transportation. And largely, I spoke about what I, I just told you, how do we build those large aspirational projects? And how do we assure that we have um, reliable, ongoing 
um, you know, uh, dedicated funding for our projects. And, and then not only the infrastructure costs, but then the ongoing operational costs are always a uh, you know, huge liability for the city as well. Um, and so those, those are some of the topics that we talked about. Okay. And then he also, you know, then, then that led him, that, that was the segue for him to start talking about a new federalism. So it was interesting. It was a very interesting conversation. But when I met him, you saw the picture of me congratulating him on his election win and, and uh, for with his government. And uh, so that's what that, that, that was. He, he does come around and he greets each of us before he sits down. And, and how this works is it's run by um, FCM. And, uh, you know, the chair kicks it off and then we have a number six to eight questions and they're usually distributed among our group um, okay. on, on the different topics. So, you know, we get a topic theme and then we develop a question around it to ask the, uh, ask the prime minister and all awesome. the cabinet ministers who come so that we cover all our themes. And we okay. have equal, you know, and everyone has a chance at asking someone something. And I was fortunate to be able to ask the transportation question, transit question to the prime minister. Uh, there's talk about a soccer stadium in Mississauga. Is there an update on that? Yes, that came up at the tourism committee. Uh, as far as I know, we were doing a feasibility study um, and I haven't seen the results of that, you know, how that could be funded or where that would even be located. Cause I know there had been talk about, you know, could it be at the Lakeview site, but I think they have that pretty much planned out without a soccer stadium at this point. Some talk of it on the ninth line lands. I, to be honest with you, I have some pretty critical infrastructure needs that unless you know there was uh, 20, 30 money available, of it, isn't that we're having World Cup, right, coming. So unless there was funding available for another government, from another level of government that was available, but not at the expense of my current infrastructure needs, right? If they were to give me I don't know how many million dollars it would cost to build a soccer stadium, great, but not in lieu of what I could have put it towards and should have put it towards, like the marina development, for instance, yeah. okay. right? Mm -hmm. There's always um, the need to have and the want, the want list and the need list, right? Sure, so and it's, it's not- there's that are attracted by those big shining baubles and I love a little more <laughs> practical. <laughs> It's not close yet, then. <laughs> and I don't want to, you know, no, it's not close. And I don't want to saddle our city with debt either. Sure. Okay. Possible MLS team, maybe? Wow, Just... wouldn't that be, that would be interesting. <laughs> um, maybe they should help pay for the cost of the stadium. Maybe. <laughs> well, I don't think they will. But, uh, so New well, maybe Year's... Maybe the development group would, right? Yeah, true. Uh -oh. uh, New... My phone's what? blowing up. I must have said something wrong. You wanna you wanna see what you said keep wrong? Going, keep talking. Okay. New Year's oh, Eve. Oh, here it is. Well, the feasibility study says it would be fifty million dollars. Fifty million dollars for the soccer stadium. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, that's I guess it's thirty-five million for the cricket stadium in Brampton. So. And how are they? How are they proposing to fund that? I mean, they're, they're in the high growth stage right now with a lot of development charges coming in, much the way Mississauga was, you know, 30, well, 25, 30 years ago. But would they use reserves to pay for that? Or are they looking for funding from other levels of government? I, have, I don't know what their plan is. I just don't want to saddle my city with debt because these big stadiums end up being white elephants, right? But I know there is a lot of excitement about a soccer stadium. I shouldn't say that because I know it would be a great venue to have, yeah. I, you know, as long as it was funded by... And like first pro team in Mississauga, maybe. Um, oh, that'd be fun. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about New Year's Eve. Is it going to happen at Celebration Square? So I don't have the conference. Oh dear, I'm getting everything at every angle here. Uh, I I don't have conference. I believe the answer to that is yes, because it will be an outdoor venue. Yeah. Right, but, but I, I, I fear that they will want to check vaccine certificates so limit the capacity because certainly we had the paint the town red event last week uh, on the Monday, Thanksgiving Monday, and we that... couldn't, we couldn't, oh, it was a great concert at the park, but we had limited capacity. People masked, I masked, um, and they checked, they checked vaccine certificates, so we couldn't host the parade because okay. you have to be seated. Right, and this was a parade, so people would be standing, and so there was no opportunity to check vaccine certificates. So that the parade portion of it was canceled, and we had concerts in the park. But the concerts were fabulous. We had all kinds of cover bands: Billy Joel, Tom Petty, uh, Tragically Hip. It was a great, great show. Great, great show. 
So, okay, so it, it'll probably happen, probably modified a little bit, right, for New Year's I, Eve? I think if it happens, it'll definitely be modified with capacity limits and masking required and vaccine certificate presentation. Awesome. Uh, Mayor Crombie, that's all I have for you. You don't have to hold on to your uh, iPad anymore. I'll send you the iPad holder. We'll fix uh, it. We'll fix it for next time. See you next week. Awesome. awesome. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.